，我也说，我们出项姿势是这样，等于你的脚步、你的身形都已经站好了。All right, y'all, I'm about to come on our channel. Okay, so today we're checking out a video about Taiwan, specifically how they are preparing for war or how they're sort of readying themselves in the event of war. So, of course, everything that we're seeing with China and their sort of claim to Taiwan, as well as all the stuff that's happening in the South China Sea, there's a lot of tension in general in the world right now. And when it comes to the Pacific area, uh, yeah, this is kind of the big focus for at least the U.S. is China and Taiwan and their sort of relations and kind of how we're backing up Taiwan as you know, its own independent country. So this is by the Unreported World YouTube channel, which I don't think I've checked out anything from this channel before, but this looks like a pretty cool kind of like mini documentary covering this topic. Now, as far as my kind of personal knowledge of this topic, I've talked to a few Taiwanese troops as far as like their mentality in the military, kind of what their focus is, how they're preparing themselves, how they're shifting up their training, what their focus is in general when it comes to kind of like multinational training exercises. And it looks like we're definitely going to be seeing more of that happening. But yeah, it looks like um, they're all pretty motivated and pretty ready to kind of defend their identity as an independent country. But it should be good. It's about 20 minutes long. And uh, from what I've seen kind of clicking through it, it looks kind of all all inclusive, pretty comprehensive covering, not just like the military mindset, but also the civilian mindset as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Taiwan is gearing up for war with China. That's airsoft, I guess. These aren't soldiers, but civilians learning how to defend their country. Taiwan is self-ruled, <laughs> but Beijing attire compared it's part to them. Of China and says it'll take the island using force if necessary. Across the nation, preppers are training to resist an invasion. Okay. <laughs> Hearing the term preppers in regards to Taiwan and them kind of being ready to defend their nation uh, is a little bit different from how I would define like a prepper here in the US. I mean, there is a very, very real, very tangible, very active sort of threat to their nation and their identity. So, I, I mean, I guess you could say they're both kind of preppers in their own right, but it's just a weird, I, I wouldn't kind of phrase them the same way as that, but that's kind of funny. I mean, yeah, I guess it is. It is prepping in the sense, but these guys definitely have a, a lot to be concerned about, especially with what they're seeing on the news probably like every day. But so far, it looks like this is pretty interesting. It looks like they have like their own kind of civilian camps or like kind of training camps set up already. But are they really a match for the world's biggest military, a force that outnumbers Taiwan's 12 to 1? Jesus, it's like, don't you dare look away when you're doing this. Yeah, of course. Oh, it is airsoft, huh? Yeah, so I'm not, I won't pause it too much. But yeah, the guys that I talked with, some of them were actually in, I think it was Cabela's or something. They were looking for gun parts. And they're looking for gun parts for their airsoft weapons because they told me that they can't actually have real weapons. And I was like, that's kind of crazy. You figured they would kind of change that right now. But yeah, he was looking for gun parts, real gun parts that worked with his airsoft gun, which was, was kind of funny. I'm like there looking for gun parts for my guns. And, you know, him going back to Taiwan is thinking about stuff to, you know, equip his airsoft gun with, which I guess in the event of war, if you do get an AR, you can kind of move some of those components over if they're compatible. <laughs> it's just wild, like... You figure they'd be able to kind of stock up on civilian weaponry. That'd be a pretty big deterrent, as opposed to uh, airsoft guns. Democratic Taiwan has never been ruled by China. But many now believe the threat of an invasion has reached critical levels. A lot of I Taiwan seen civilians feel they need to what get Taiwan them looks like too much, to be honest. More with China. I'm on my way to meet a group of them here in one of the country's biggest cities, Taichung. They are the preppers. Hi, Morning. Is that Hi, what they you? title themselves? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. How are you? Good. Uh, so, you got all your kit? Yeah. You got a tourniquet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joe yeah. is a nurse Pretty important. who started this training just two months ago. <laughs> Tactical corset. Is that real night vision he's got? 
Okay. At informal schools like this across the country, more and more people are spending their time and money learning how to use weapons defensively. Alright. I mean, we've kind of seen already and talked about it a couple times on the channel that Airsoft is actually a fantastic training tool when it comes to kind of those skills that you can transfer over to real firearms. Because having a background in Airsoft for several years Bruh. really helped me when I started shooting a rifle and a pistol for the first time. And going into the military, that was the first time I fired real firearms. And I gotta say, those skills transferred over very well uh, to the point where I, I've always shot expert on all the qualifications because again, I kind of had some of that background, that experience working with those firearms. Nice kid. In this makeshift basement firing range, all the weapons are replicas that shoot plastic pellets. Right. Gun ownership oh, yeah. for civilians is illegal in Taiwan. That's crazy. The decision to learn to use a weapon is still quite controversial here. I can't see how. Joe says she's thought hard about it. When you do this, when you actually do the shooting, how does it make you feel? Uh, uh, <laughs> If China invaded, hmm. would you fight? Yeah, of course. 当然, but again, like working with airsoft guns is one thing, but like having the experience with actual firearms, especially when you're talking about like a you know firearm malfunctions or failures or cleaning a firearm, maintaining a firearm, there's a lot of like particular nuances you need hands on with actual firearms to kind of get that experience with. And a lot of that stuff you don't want to be trying to figure out as your country is actively being invaded. This is closed quarters battle or CQB training. The idea is to hold a position and check the building for enemy fighters. Damn. In Taiwan's Their kid is cities, solid, I gotta say. If an attack happens, it would likely be urban warfare like this. Yeah, no doubt. Joe's Taiwan is very urban. Is on using her first aid skills to support the army behind the front line. She fears the country's hospitals would be overwhelmed in a war. The medical training is super important. Regardless of your thoughts of firearms, this is crucial. Yeah, even like a tourniquet or just basic medical medical aid could cost ten thousand lives in the first few days alone. That's Civilians it? here want to learn how to deal with a massive casualty situation. I would say more than that, even. Coming up to 8 o'clock, most people have finished work, and Central Park here in Taichung is deserted, except for Joe and her group of preppers, who come here for what they call self-training, where they each share the skills that they have. Huh. It's just in like a park? Okay. Across the country, there's a growing movement of groups like Joe's, an estimated 1.6 million of Taiwan's 23 million people have done some form of civil defense training. 23 million? Damn. Nice, okay. Tonight's exercise oh, that's cool. is a simulated enemy attack. Joe and her Damn, wife are freaking... trained together every Friday. Legit, I mean, the even like the strobes and stuff. But the intent is serious. We've all seen in America the preppers preparing for doomsday. And they are kind of thought of often as sort of quite eccentric. Is your group different to that? 
我觉得不一样，但是同样的一点是对于未来的担心。那我们现在是把这个担心更具体化，然后把我们这个焦虑的 Damn, 焦虑的情绪转为实际可以做的事情。Do you think I would say the threat is more, a lot closer at least. 但现在绝对比过去一个月、半年，甚至一年还要多人来准备这件事情。然后人们也在这个团体里面得到呃，不管是信心也好，或者是一起准备的伙伴也好。好，肩膀给你们，两个叫我来，来一二三 ，Go Go。The rescue mission ends with the casualties carried to safety. I wonder what people in Taiwan think of kind of them doing that. The preppers. Real life military exercises released by China's armed forces show why people are worried. Beijing's multi-day drills demonstrate how it would annex Taiwan entirely, using live fire exercises, fighter jets, naval deployments, and ballistic missile launches across the Taiwan Strait. Yeah. The intimidation tactics have a clear message. Don't begin to think you can resist. It's crazy when you see how close they actually are, though. It makes it very hard to respond appropriately. Taking Taiwan, Kinmen Island, just two miles from mainland China, is a good place to start. Well, and also another thing is like, China is really just going to be kind of calling everybody's bluff. Like, oh, we know you guys are saying you're going to, you know, help Taiwan or fight for Taiwan, but. You know, and then they're going to slowly start pushing this stuff and pushing the envelope and seeing who actually responds or how they respond. And we've kind of been seeing this with like the South China Sea, how they're kind of beefing up their military assets there. This was once the front line of a war with China. Messages of peace are still broadcast across the water to Xiamen. Oh shit! Really? That'd be so cool to hear. What a psyop, man! Imagine you can hear that from across the water. After losing to the communists in a brutal civil war, the nationalists fled to Taiwan in 1949, creating the Republic of China. Kinmen was the battleground. Over 6,000 people died fighting for the island. The nationalists kept it, but Beijing has claimed Taiwan as its territory ever since. <laughs> Today, the shell damage and propaganda are kitsch tourist attractions. But for、oh, really? residents like Maestro Wu, war is still within living memory. Let's see. When you were a boy, where were the bombs landing? No kidding. How old is he? How then? That's a door. Down on the ground. Down on the ground. The sea is still there. The sea is still there. The sea is still there. How do you feel about the Chinese people? What is their relationship to you? Such a cool perspective. I mean, yeah, you、That、have to think.、Works. There's, of course, going to be a lot of similarities. The history alone is going to be pretty much again identical until. About the 40s, when again all of them kind of moved to Taiwan and started creating their own kind of、uh, area there. But you have to think if you're in Taiwan, you're staying in Taiwan, you're probably kind of really behind what Taiwan stands for as far as being a democracy when compared to you know communist China. Maestro Wu makes knives from old shell casings. That's so cool. And there's cool. no shortage of material to work with. Over a million of these landed here. This is a part of our family home. What the heck? That's a beautiful、awesome. thing. Oh, still warm. <laughs> like many people, I wonder how much he sells those for. Maestro Wu wants to keep the peace, even if that means negotiating with China. Some people here they look at what happened in Ukraine, and they see the Ukrainians fighting the Russians, and they say this would be the same for Taiwan, and Taiwan should fight China if that were to happen. What do you think of that? Oh, I think this is the most powerful politician. It's about how to make the danger seem to be minimal. Yeah, just avoid the conflict entirely. Make the danger seem to be minimal. Yeah, just avoid the conflict entirely. 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 
所以你只要一打下去，整个台湾一定是毁掉。嗯。What do you say? It's hard to not understand that it is such a small island. Solutions is naive, and that China is an evil country that needs to be confronted. 到目前为止，从我我们我小时候到现在，我还没有看过他去侵略别的国家，到别的国家去打仗。所以在我们看来，觉得说这些都是只是一个很多都是一个假设。Yeah, and of course, China understands that a lot of people will, you know, immediately kind of jump on them if they start to do anything that looks like kind of them warmongering. But they're a little bit craftier, a lot craftier when it comes to things like that, like their soft power initiatives, how they basically can leverage all of their citizens in foreign countries as a sort of foreign actor to bring the Chinese government information. And, and that's pretty much what they say. It's like if you're a, a citizen of China, if we want the information, it's on you to provide it for us. So you have all these initiatives, all these kind of programs and stuff in other countries that the Chinese government can exploit. You know, it just in addition to how they leverage infrastructure, how they leverage these loans with other countries to be able to lock down certain parts or you know gather this information without actively invading it. Across the water from Kinmen, the bright lights of Xiamen may seem more photo opportunity than threat. Hmm. But looking at Taipei Harbor on the main island, Taiwan's vulnerability is obvious. The Taiwan Strait is one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, and Taiwan's lifeline. China could seal off this island nation and force it to negotiate or surrender. Exactly. And that's when people need to make a decision block, how they're going to approach that. I meet another prepper, Charles Chi, who's worried about a blockade. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hello. Charles. Morning. Nice Good. to see you. Good morning. Thank you. So this is home. Yes. And this is all your supplies, is it? Yes. So you've got everything you need? Yeah. This is my Oh, snap. Medical okay. Supplies. Medical supplies that's and soup. food. Uh, tonic head and the combat gauze. This is my battery Damn, box. Okay. Candle. Charles is a captain in the army. He'd be uh, part of sense. Taiwan's yeah. official military response. But despite this, he's preparing for the worst. So hmm. this is not about fighting. This is about surviving. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a point. The hmm. job of the government yeah. is to look after the people. Yeah. But you're saying, no, you must look after yourself. When the, uh, yeah. Disaster, yeah, they're going to be uh, focused on a lot of things and not you in particular. Civil breakdown. Yeah, civil breakdown. Bandage. There is so much yeah. kit, you can't ever forget it, can you? It's like you're living in a, in a bunker. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the prepare, you know. That, that, yeah, I, I, I want and I like it. Hmm. Oh, I wonder what those books were about. Taiwan only has to look to Hong Kong to see what China can do to its democracy. <laughs> Beijing promised to respect one country, two oh, systems. Oh yeah, we've been seeing this the last couple of years. But ended up suppressing free speech, violently cracking down on protests, imprisoning pro-democracy activists, and squashing the umbrella revolution. Jeez. Most of this is that we stand with Hong Kong and for freedom, fight for freedom. Joe has taken me to see Tai Chung's Lenin That Wall. is awesome artwork, Covered in dude. messages of support for Hong Kong and Ukraine, this kind of huh. expression of free speech would be banned in China. Hi, Casey. Hi, how are you doing? I'm okay. Nice to meet you. What's he got the helmet Casey for? Casey is a Hong Konger, an artist and activist. You were in the protest this <laughs> week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I find a poster of me Really? In what, this here? Tunnel. Yeah. Where? Over there. Casey <laughs> met Joe at her training group. That's me right there. He's now living in Taiwan in self-declared exile. The red giant is coming. We've got to be united and fight against this red giant adversary. But isn't, isn't the fact that you're here yes. the proof that you can't fight? Yes. True. You know, the, the, the giant is much, much bigger. The people of Hong Kong didn't hmm. have the army, we didn't have guns, we didn't have tanks and missiles and high mars and America. <laughs> high mars specifically, I like that. 
Dude, I'd love to just kind of go here and look through all of this freaking artwork here because, and I mean, I wouldn't be able to read what, you know, most of this is saying, but the artwork, I got to say, is pretty freaking awesome. But we still rise, million and two millions of us with our bare body. So it's not about winning. It's about how to fall down gracefully so that other city states nearby can wake up. But do, do you hmm. feel that Taiwan could win? In a fight. If we are, we are uh, together enough, we are get together enough, Taiwan people, even we are not win, but we are not lose. I mean, yeah, because then you might just have situations like you see sort of in like a counterinsurgency kind of scenario. Because even if you're in the land already and you have, you know, superior technology, it is going to be difficult because you're fighting an ideology at that point, regardless of, you know, who has the upper hand when it comes to technology and intelligence and, and all that stuff. It's still going to be just this active resistance the entire time you're there. Not losing. Yeah. Because I think sometimes it's not about winning yeah, yeah. or losing. It's yeah. about the process yeah. for the fight of freedom and democracy, right? Yeah, and if we don't stand up for our country, we cannot hope other country to cope with us. Yeah. So we have to stand hmm. up at first. Taiwan knows this is all about resisting China's might. And one way to do that is to show that the hmm. population is prepared. Is that a building? This weekend, Zhou has traveled up to the capital, Taipei, to observe a drill organized by an NGO called Forward Alliance. Hmm. Oh, snap, in the capital city, that's pretty cool. They're allowing they that stuff. thousands of civilian responders who can mobilize if there's a disaster, ranging from a typhoon or earthquake to the biggest existential threat facing Taiwan, war with China. That's super cool. They have like the destroyed vehicles and stuff. For Joe, seeing hmm. training on this scale with hundreds of attendees and so well resourced is reassuring. It looks like a pretty comprehensive exercise they got going on. I don't know how many people got involved, but the race I mean, they, they got like the uniforms and stuff. It's as much about technology as it is about manpower. I'm meeting a toy hmm. maker that's helping to develop kit for the army. Wait, is it a toy maker? It looks like a toy, and that's the okay. point. This was <laughs> I would call that a, a famous a toy. toy company once upon a time making remote control cars. But Taiwan has looked at Ukraine and realized uh, that okay. these sorts I, of I things they were just could making be drones. crucial for defense. Okay. That's a nice looking drone. This surveillance drone has advanced AI. It can lock on and track moving targets like this high speed train. Oh, damn. Drones are a key tool. That's cool. I wonder how expensive warfare. that thing is. But the problem is Taiwan has just hundreds of them compared to China's tens of thousands. <laughs> yeah, true that with fucking DJI and stuff. <laughs> yeah. The drone against drone warfare would be a different one. And other commercial companies to join its national drone team and develop models hmm. for the military. Do you think Taiwan can keep up? Damn. I believe so. Those Taiwan be cool, making dude. the uh, most advanced uh, commercial chips for uh, all the industry worldwide. Mm -hmm. But uh, now the Taiwanese government and Taiwanese company and Taiwanese people are aware that they should do uh, something for themselves to protect themselves. Yeah, no doubt. You're going to need a lot of these. Then. Yes. Yes, we need a not, our government should not only purchase 3,000, they should purchase 30,000. For you, is this just a commercial hmm. decision um, to make money for your shareholders? <laughs> or is Bro. this about national defense? <laughs> From our How are you going to answer that? Huh? Loving flying uh, these uh, airplanes and drones and helicopters. So it, it's a fantastic a dream job for us. We can make money for ourselves and we can hmm. also make something which is meaningful to our country. 
Damn, okay. That was a great answer. On every level Being of Taiwan honest society, there. society, there are people gearing up for war. And at the country's largest defense expo, oh, yeah. it all looks very slick. <laughs> Taiwan's biggest military suppliers nice. are here at this expo, but there's something else going on. That would be fun to check out too. The Vlogging in there. Of replica weapons and civil militia. The lines between these two worlds are really starting to blur. Hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, that'd be Taiwan's freaking awesome. military has experience. been accused of being on the back foot, with too few soldiers and weapons, and an insufficient conscription program. But does it really need the preppers' help to beat China's army, the PLA? I've. <laughs> he didn't. He didn't really dive into it, but I wonder what their conscription looks like. If you guys have any information on the Taiwanese conscription, let me know. I'll try and look a little bit up after this, but yeah, I don't know. I'm. The only thing I can compare it to is probably like South Korea, but again, like it, there's really it really doesn't need to be the same whatsoever. It's just geographically they're close, and that's about it. Come to the country's main defense think tank to ask. Dr. Shen, hello, Where Krishnan Guru Murthy, hello. Thank you very much indeed for having us. If you compare numbers, yeah, how can Taiwan ever defeat the Chinese army? Okay, you can see. Yeah, the PLA had two million, but how many tools he can use in Taiwan Strait? I think maybe 300,000 or 400,000. We can use the urban warfare and maybe big city warfare. You seem very it's Unconventional warfare, yeah. even. That's, That's going to be military huge. Military action is coming. Yeah. Is, is this what the Taiwanese military is ambush tactics out. Uh, yes. But Joe Biden yes. has said he will not allow it. Yeah. Yet we know that United States will intervene Taiwan Strait conflict, but we don't know which way or which model. Maybe the model like Ukraine, mm. but between Ukraine and United States, they don't have uh, the so-called like uh, Taiwan Relation Act. So the truth is that Taiwan is relying on the United States. Of course, right now, yeah. So what, what do you think of the? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. The again, very, very valid, yeah, very kind of honest. For war. It, it's unrealistic to think that Taiwan is going to, you know, completely be ready to. It's unrealistic to think that Taiwan is going to go one on one with China and prevail when you're talking about like the Navy assets, air assets, amphibious assets. Once you start moving into urban conflict, then again, it's kind of a little bit more on level level ish playing field. But again, when you talk about technology, when you have the ability to exploit technology, even the, the host nation technology, then it can get very difficult. I don't know if he was expecting a different answer, but like, yeah, he, he's being pretty honest in that response. Choice to stay in Taiwan, it means that they want to prepare or want to defend their own prosperity, their life, and their country. It's useful. If people where the fighting is very high, yeah, a any weapon system can use, they will use. Hmm. Yeah, monkey, this looks like a really cool market. Tiger sugar. <laughs> China may see Taiwan as its own province to be reclaimed, but Taiwan has enjoyed years of democratic freedoms and won't give them up easily. <laughs> what preppers yeah, like hard, Joe hard to give up freedom, is quite huh? hard to define precisely, but you get a sense of it if you come here to one of Taiwan's famous night markets. It's really relaxed. Joe and her wife can come here and they don't feel watched. They can do what they want, they can <laughs> say what they want. And it's that freedom they want to hold on to. The government can't just come and take all their stuff. China's lack of marriage equality is one obvious threat to Joe. Why do you love your country? People in here, is, uh, they can be free in thought, in lifestyle, even in art. But in China, hmm. they have to... Um, Whatever happens to Taiwan <laughs> in the future, whether it's one country, two systems, whether it's a Chinese takeover, what will your identity be? Still Taiwanese. Even, even wars happen, even it's one country, two systems, I'm still Taiwanese. Hmm. Taiwan has long hoped to avoid war with China by treading carefully. But as Beijing gets bolder, so too do the preppers. This island nation 
is gaining the confidence to push back. I still wonder if they self-identified as preppers exactly. I think they need maybe like different terminology. At least, you know, here in the US, preppers is a very well-known term. Yeah, so again, this is a very interesting topic, very topical topic, I, I guess, if you will, as well. But yeah, I do like how they had a lot of different perspectives. I wish that we would have been able to kind of see more perspective from the actual Taiwanese military service members as far as what they think, how they're preparing, um, how they're trying to shape everything around them to kind of get ready and prepare for, for that war. But this is a topic that I want to see more videos about, kind of learn more about, kind of learn a little bit more about the history as far as how Taiwan got its identity. So if you guys have any videos to recommend, definitely let me know. Of course, I'll try and do some more research at, on my own, kind of like in the background to kind of understand it a little bit better. But definitely, uh, yeah, very fascinating and definitely something that we're going to be keeping an eye on here you know, in, in the coming years, yeah, especially as we're watching everything kind of in Ukraine unfold. I think Taiwan is going to continue looking at that and kind of getting some lessons learned as to how to better prepare themselves. But of course, if you guys have anything to recommend, anything to comment, you can definitely throw that down below or hit me up in the Discord. But thank you guys for watching. Thank you for this great recommendation. You guys are always good at sending me some cool stuff. And this is just one that I want to check out because we haven't really hit up this topic too much yet. But thank you for watching. That is it for this video. I'll see you on the next one.